Okay, so I'm Bruce Wilson, and my organization um, is Service Rooted Incorporated. I am the executive director of that organization. Um, we've been doing this work in, in um, primarily in Chittenden County since uh, 1999. Um, Art So Wonderful is one of our programs, because we have many programs, like United College Club, Get Fit Vermont, Vermont Low Garden Music, Straight Talk Vermont, you know, if you have a lot of programs that we uh, facilitate, um, and it's basically our programs are geared to help people with their goals, dreams, and aspirations while providing safe places that they can actually um, come to and uh, have a good time for free. And, um, and so um, do we offer internships and community service opportunities, which we all should do, have, have some community service opportunities. And um, so, so we're proud, so I would back that and say that um, so it's kind of like a system, systemic organization. We'll help you with your needs in, in the world or things in your goals. And, and we use our community partners as well as people who, who do the things that you might want to do to help us and help that individual meet their goals in life. And you're working with young people throughout Vermont or Chittenden mm -hmm. County? Well, primarily our organization is Chittenden County organization. Um, but we have, we do work with uh, Rutland County individuals and we do work in Franklin County. Um, you know, and yeah, in Addison County as well, because we work at Middlebury College. So, uh, so what we do is, is everything I just said we did, you know, um, we have um, a program called United College Club, and primarily we work with students who are, um, who go to those colleges like UVM, St. Mike's, John Champlain, Norris, Castle, and Middlebury, primarily the colleges we work with with students. And we help them, like I said, with jobs, job selling, mentoring opportunities. We help them um, with, most importantly, internships. I have six interns. And um, thank God for those interns. I'm telling you, and the good thing about it is, they do, we help them do the things they want to do in life based on what their majoring is. You know, we might ask them to help us um, paint a mural, or help us um, uh, facil uh, you know, facilitate a program in our, one of our centers or something, you know. But also, but if they're like a, a PR person or they want to be a doctor or a lawyer or an Indian chief, then we connect them to those people that they are. And um, quite frankly, um, we have a success rate of helping these individuals. They get jobs, they get, get the experience, like for our instance, like our, our Art So Wonderful program started around 2000, really 2001. Um, and so how it was named, it was named from college interns at UVM. They was our college interns, they wanted to do art programs, they actually want to teach um, elementary, uh, they want to be our teachers and teach elementary, middle school kids, arts, all different things, you know. And um, so, we, you know, they helped us, you know, with all the different things, we do youth centers and we had the malls and all kind of with the youth. But we helped them with their goals. And um, Art So Wonderful was started with, with them. And what it was, was we had an office down on, in the owner of Inn, on North Street, where we worked primarily with um, individuals, the community, the families, and businesses there, um, you know, North Street being, at, maybe still be, the highest risk and economically challenged, probably one of the, in the neighborhoods in the state. And so what these girls did was they go around, they went around North, Old North End, picked up all these little kids, taught their parents, you know, and tell them what we was going to do, and um, sign these kids up. And these kids came to our, our, every like two or three times a week to our place, in our office space, we had a nice little uh, gathering room too we can do these things work at. And they would teach these kids like charcoal drawing, or they went out to landscape painting, they, you know, all, you know, regular, uh, regular painting in our center. Oh my God. So what happened was, what we did, what those girls did, and what we did was um, help these, help the community while also providing some um, activity keeping kids in low risk where they can be in a place where there's no drugs and alcohol, tobacco, and learn about art. And, um, and what we did for the college interns was now, as they wanted to be an art teacher, they got to learn what it would it, what it be um, what it would be to work with elementary and middle school kids. And not only that, they was able to design curriculum. You know, and Ben and Jerry's response, we were bringing ice cream, you know. So, I, you know, I think at first the kids come for the ice cream, you know. But that was like, come on kids, come and get some Ben and Jerry's. Now I learned some art, you know. And, um, and so Art So Wonderful evolved. Um, well, well, the name evolved, but we, since 1999, we were doing a graffiti uh, removal program. It was, through, um, it was through our program at the time, Straight Talk Vermont, you know, which um, 
we changed the name in 2007 to Service Render because my boy said, all we do is ser render service, you know, so we just changed the name Straight Talk Mom, meaning being straight with yourself, you know, and, and community and everything you do, that's what Straight Talk Mom meant. And, um, and so, so we had a graffiti abatement program and we created um, through the Community Justice Center, which I'm a founding member of the Community Justice Center around the state, and we had a graffiti abatement program and so um, what happens with individuals who got in trouble by doing graffiti would, um, like the course, course and rapid, the restorative justice fund, all these people would send them to me, straight talk from on, you know. Go see Bruce and clean up that daggone, you know, mural, that tags you made. So I, because I believe in restoring justice, I said, let's go, go clean out and everybody should help. Um, let's, now you can do a beautiful mural that you can show your mama, she can help you, the police can hand you the, the paintbrush, whatever, you know. And um, so that's how our uh, graffiti removal pr program started. Normally, we don't put murals over over blank walls. We don't, if all our murals go over graf graffiti walls because we still have a graffiti abatement program. And in 2001, I learned through my studies about um, doing murals and art and whatever, that um, if you put a mural over graffiti, um, graffiti vandals or you know they they honor it. They don't go bomb the wall, as they call it, bomb the wall. They don't bomb the wall because it's a like code of ethnics, you know what I'm saying? And so, you know, very seldom do they do that, you know. If any ones that they bomb on our wall, we go fix it right, right quick. But the good thing about it, too, is about we have a, like a secret about why people don't bomb our walls. And this is a secret. It's not really a secret. It's that I want the, any, anybody to know this so they can do it, too, because our stuff is no secret. We want everybody to, to do, if they see something good that we do, to do it, and if, and if we can help you do it, let's do it. But anyways, so because those individuals, the bomb the wall guys, would come to, refer to me through restorative justice panels, course and rapid air, rapid intervention, you know, community justice center, um, reparative um, boards, um, and we give an opportunity to put real nice murals up there. Guess what? Every time those bombers see those their name on the wall, they don't bomb the wall because that's like they, you know, that's they boy, that's they peeps, you know what I'm saying? They, even though these people have got better because now they're doing work on canvas and murals and arts, you know, making a lot of money doing this work, but their friends see their name and, and they honor, they don't bomb the wall. And we tell our guys, if you know any bombers, tell them quit bombing the walls around Bronson, Brown State. You know, and just come see me because I have a wall for them. You know what I mean? So that's our. But let me tell you a quick story about the individuals. Since we're talking about these individuals who came to the course, course of rapid and all these, to refer to me, and we gave them opportunity to clean up their what they messed up, and then part of their. I mean, if you got 50 hours, it was like 24 hour hours. The same theory to clean the wall. Up. Guess what? The other 25 hours gonna go on. You, for, you doing the wall. You know, and we buy all the paint. But but the thing is that now we have some stories where individuals came to our courts. And this is what I love about our programs because um, we have some good outcome measurements from them. Is that these individuals, one of them, and I can think of many of these same type artists, said to me one day, Bruce, I want to start putting art on canvas. I say, wow, that's awesome. Let's put art on canvas. He started putting art on canvas. And then so, so we showed his art at first at Daily, Daily uh, Planet. Then we showed him at the Echo Center. Then we showed him at the um, Flint Space. This guy was popular, you know what I'm saying? He had his art and people's buying it. And we had our art show every year, as you know, CCTV know, at the uh, uh, Marriott. We do this our eighth, going on our ninth year of free to artists, and he did this stuff. He was selling works out of there for two to three thousand dollars, this kid. And so then he, so, and then he said, Bruce, I'm going to college. Because <laughs> I'll care, you know, our program's like, you know, higher learners, how can we get you in college, with art school, or whatever you want to do. And um, he said, I'm going to go to college, and I already applied now, I just need you to give me a reference line. So I said, where do you want to go? He said, Pratt Institute. So he went to Pratt Institute, he graduated at Pratt Institute, then he was sending me emails showing me his photos, I mean his pictures, in uh, North Carolina, in a, in a, in a, mu like a neighborhood museum. <laughs> My man, and so like, so this is, this is why I get excited about doing this work, and this is why I see that, um, I see this what we do for people. I have many, many, and, you, and CCT know, TV know me, that I have many, many stories about, I can talk about individuals who meet that goes, and, and it ain't about me, it's about the people who I serve, because I serve them, they don't serve me, and I help them for real with their goals, dreams, and aspirations, by the people I know I can't do it. You know, I have like 200 master's degrees or, or, or PhDs on knowing people that, that can help these people. <laughs> and that's what I'm the best at. You know what I'm saying? It's like, if they want to know about media productions, I'm coming, to, and you know it, I've done it. Come to see CTTV, 
all the time. I, I, I don't try to act like I know anything about I, but I do know, you know, Megan O'Rourke and the people like, you know, who help, who, who helps me. I do know those people. And sure enough, I don't know how many years I've done that. And CCTV know that I do that. And so, so you want to talk about this Black Lives Matters music? Because um, the Black Lives yeah. Okay, so Black Lives Matter Museum, I mean, um, mural, it was like, so we work with um, the city, like with the, like I said, through the through our um, graffiti removal programs, and we also put on we also we also put um, art on the wall, um, murals over you know walls, and so for for code enforcement, and they do they clean up um, walls like they did this, they clean up this wall here, and um, so I was asking to talk to Bill Ward about um, you know we're showing each other stuff we did about do he have a a wall. That we can, you know, that he put the graffiti, or I mean, that he cleaned up, um, that we can have. Because I know for a fact, when you just paint over it, it's just a canvas. They'll come back and do it again, but if you put a mural on it, they won't. You know, what I mean, in theory, that's how it been work for us. I would say 97% of the time they don't. And if they do, we come right out and make it nice again. You know, what I'm saying, same right, quick, quick. But anyways, so he gave us so us this wall, and I showed it to, showed it to um, my um, lead muralist person named Jay, um, Jamie Bedard, B E D A R D B E. D A R D. I have to spell it for myself. I get it. <laughs> Jamie Bedard, and um, she's she's amazing. She does. I asked her to do our music. She designed it. And we get our art team or our programs to help us to do it. You know. But so she designed this one. And first she had she had um, gave me the draft design. It was all flowers, and it was gonna be beautiful, big old sunflower. It was gonna be a beautiful wall with these flowers. You know. And then um, all the things hit the news and. You know, as being African American myself, I felt that um, I'm affected. <laughs> you know, what I mean? <laughs> certainly I am. So when I came in Vermont, it was the first; it was the whitest state in America. <laughs> Figure that. And I think it's like the second or something. So you know, even though Vermont, you know, you know, it's, it's a it's a good state to be in because I came here because I'm just gonna back up a minute. I came here because um, first I was brought up here as a kid, and then I came up here because you know the motto was unity and freedom. The Underground Railroad went through here. They had a documentary about a lady who lived in Shalott, and uh, she had this um, shop called Africa, Africa Authentica. And I'm like, damn, there's a, there's a black girl, lady, you know? <laughs> so, and uh, I learned about Burlington. I knew, you know, if I had to get out of town fast, Burlington, we need to, we need to go to Burlington, you know, to get out, to be able to get the Air Force train or whatever, to get, if I had to get out fast. And so, um, because of those things, you know, you know, more liberal, and I learned about people, I did my due diligence, and so that's why I came here. And um, I'm gonna tell this quick story. Like, so, um, so when I told my mother that I was coming, because she used to bring me up here, and I was, I was coming to live in Vermont, she said, Bruce, you're gonna make a difference. You're gonna make a difference. And I didn't know what she meant about it, but I was raised through the civil rights movement in Chicago, Illinois. You know, Jesse Jackson's wife, Jackie's come out of the house, and Mary Hill Watson, and all that. And, but anyway, so one year I called my mother up. I said, Mom, Mom, I made a difference. I made it. She said, What you do, what you do? I said, Vermont is the second white state now. <laughs> Well, anyway, so this mural was like, um, you know, it was going to be all flowers, and then all these issues about Black Lives Matter and, and different things came up. And I asked her, could you put a Black Lives Matter up there on that wall? And she said, um, she said, Bruce, first she says, you know, she sent me a wish text her. She's like, done, because like she done this out, like she's all done. She ain't going to change her. But she didn't mean that. She meant done, that um, she, that, that's a great idea. And, and then she said, boy, I don't, how am I going to put. Black Lives Matter over flowers. I'm like, that's better. It's peaceful. It's, it's harmonious. It's calm, cooling. You know, it's not. We're not saying Black Lives Matter like you know some like the Black Panther Party where that was around that was originated from in Chicago where I'm from. You know what I'm saying? And we're not. We wasn't. They was. They was. They wasn't like that either, actually. But um, so I'm just trying to say we we wasn't like we're not trying to put up to this, be mean to nobody because we love everybody. You know what I mean? I wouldn't be in Vermont. I wouldn't have came here to the whitest state of America if I felt you know I was against people and I was raised on the south side of Chicago all day you know so I know about the block the neighborhoods you know I've been a part of it I've been trouble myself you know what I'm saying and so I know but I always I always talk to be um the community minded because all those people my mother's raised that way and I always talk to, was taught to be um, um do community service I always talk to also make amends to the community or individual you offended you know what I mean? And I always was taught that keep your community and neighborhoods beautiful. W work with everybody. And it has no color. Just what you do. You know what I mean? And it's how you, it's what the people supposed to do. You know? So I put this uh, mural up there. Well, I didn't put it up there. I, I, I paid it for, for credit 
I, me and my one of my other directors painted it all blue the the prior. <laughs> so, so I did something, you know. But um, but so so it came out so nice and you know it was it, it found out to be like in the perfect spot place. You know, you come down one way, so you're on a nice building. And the thing about it was that uh, the thing about it is that. I believe everything works in divine order, you know what I'm saying? So I, I don't think that this this space and, and the timing and everything was came to be because of my little tiny brain. I think it came to be because it was there was this perfect it's worked in the order that it's supposed to and I believe in that. And I, that's what I believe in. Everything works in divine order, not before. And so there it is. And so um people came back, we got a lot of hits on it. CCTV got it up, we got a uh, VPR put it up, we got like oh, what, 300 likes on it. And I was looking at other things on VPR that that seemed to be more important to me, you know, I mean, kind of, you know, in theory, you know what I'm saying? And they have nowhere near the likes we have. So these are Vermonters, you know what I mean? These are people who are looking at that mural and they uh, get the little story about our program, Art So Wonderful on it. And um, they are really like, wow, that's nice. That's a nice music. They're not like nothing militant or mean about it, you know, saying something, you know, like, yeah, Black Lives Matter, you know, they just like, they get it. It's a harmonious. It's a. It's a. We want you to feel it in your heart, in your heart, in your, in your spirit. This mural. And that's what we want people to do. We don't want to. You know. You know. We, we, we be emotional about it. Take take opportunities to do something. You know. People who you know. People who call. Or let's learn about people. And let, let me tell you a quick story too. So like, <clears throat> I don't believe that. Um. I sit on a lot of. I sit on a lot of racial. Probably all the racial justice programs in the state. You know. You know, all of them. You know, I was on the governor and EJ, AG um, racial justice, uh, Vermont State Police, fair and partial policing, Uncommon Alliance. We helped change the data collection with the chiefs around, and we did. I'm a commissioner in Winooski at the city for the city of Winooski. I'm a commissioner right now. I'm a founding member of the Community Justice Center around the state in 1998. And so I sit on a lot of, you know, been a part of this active, you know, this because I felt like, you know, the numbers. You know, I guess it's maybe because you know where I was raised to. I'm sure it had a lot to do with it, but I think it's also because I have to have to represent the people who look like me in a state that have probably nobody who looks like me. And the thing about it, I don't think um, a lot of people in the state or people, white people in the state, are like racist or whatever. I think because I'm I'm about education, you know, and I think you know, and I always try to find what's good about something, not what's bad about it, you know, or what seems to be bad. I think it's because, first of all, this state, and a lot of other states, white people don't go to church with black people, they don't live next door to them, they don't go to school with them, they don't shop at the same grocery shopping store, maybe you'll see them at the malls, few, and so um, because of that, how do they get the information? Normally they go with some stereotypical, mostly in their brain, based on what they've learned or saw and was food food by through up to um, the ages of time with African Americans coming from slavery, or you know, you know, and all of that. And so, and they see it on TV, the news, the, the magazine. Some black person did this. And they see it on the news. Some black people did that. You know, they see all this. Uh, black people in poverty. Look at that. Look at that neighborhood. See, living is pitiful. You know, black people are looting and rioting. Black, all this stuff. And so, so, if it was me. And I've never been around a black person. I've never met one. I've never been in these schools or churches or, you know, been shopping plaza or whatever. None of those things with them. Well, what am I supposed to think, you know what I mean? I must have something or a lot of me that says that that person could be like that. You know, they could be, they could be like that, you know what I'm saying? And so, so I, I believe that in Vermont, particularly, that this is one of the reasons that's why, um, that no, most people are not racist, they're just not educated. Cause soon they would meet me, you know, and I'm, I'm tell you, I've been to some high risk situations. I know some gangsters on, on, on Chicago. I still know some. You know what I mean, I, 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 people here that so-called gang, I know them. But I, my goal is to help them change to do the other thing. That's what I do. You know what I mean? And so I've been in trouble myself. You know what I'm saying? But still, my programs have over 50 awards. I have, I have opened up youth centers for years and my free for kids to chill out centers and living rooms and, and Loft 89 and um, Fairhaven and Rutland and Nelly, you know, usually across the state for youth to come. Nice ones, tight with you. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. That's very cool, the chill out center. Yeah. Explain that. What yeah. are you doing? 
Well, the chill, the chill out centers, were, well, they're not chill. They, they evolved to uh, art so wonderful galleries and performing centers now. Yeah. And so we only have two. And one is in the Burlington City Place Mall and one is in the University Mall. But um, the chill out centers, for I give you a little history on it, was uh, created by my youth, youth advisory boards from all the different high schools around Tennant County in 2003. And their goal was that um, they should have a place where they can go and hang out and have activities and you know just be a social social um, service or whatever just hang out with their friends a safe healthy sick healthy outlets and safe places that's what I'm trying to say and so uh, I thought that are you right about that you know what I mean why not and so one kid said well, we you know we talked about um, where and ways and um, and then okay. Yeah, so we talked about where and where, and something name and where places came up, like um, places that's, you know, empty, you know, we can try to rent it or whatever. And then uh, somebody said the malls, so we always hang out at the malls, you know. I said, that's a great idea. So I said, let me talk to um, the owners of the malls and see if, I'm, I know they're not 100% occupied, see if we can get some spaces in there, some at some deduct real, the lowest cost they could possibly give us or give us and, and help us sponsor us too, you know. And I did. And they said, University Mall. I said, yeah. I'm like, wow. And I told those kids. And they had a few spaces. And they said, and plus, we, we, we have a, you can pick your place. It's how I my youth board. And then they was like, yo, excited. And uh, they picked their place. And we got all our sponsors, you know what I mean, to donate pool tables, brand new stuff. We didn't, we, all our stuff was brand spanking new. We didn't mess around. We didn't, our kids deserve the best. We don't come in no crappy place, the best. But then we also had our kids paint the place up, you know what I mean? They kept it nice, you know. But they, you know, had all the best things. And so it was free for any kid. We charged no dollars, zero dollars. And then we had a, um, you know, we had, the first one was in the University Mall, around 2,000 square feet. Then we had one in the Burlington Mall. That was like, that was uh, almost 8,000 square feet. We had a, and um, you know, dance studio, recording studio, full kitchen, you name it, front room, uh, computer rooms, you know, chill rooms, you know. And so it was real nice. That we kept that for it was like seven thousand five hundred five square feet, I remember that you number. Know? And then um and so we did the same thing and then and so some people from Rutland, basketball team, uh, my friend um Harry Snyder used to be the one of the resource man at the city hall and uh, so I knew him and his son came with Pickett Rutland is playing ball for Bronx High School and uh, he came in the mall and he like you know he introduced himself to me and um, he knew who I was you know and I was like yeah and so I said he said man we really need one of these in Rutland he really needs it. and so many people so many people in Rutland have already asked me to come up there and do some stuff this was in 2010 and um, so I, you know, ultimately, I said, okay, if you guys be on my youth board, I'll do it. And then and they were. I got a space in um, Diamond Run Mall. It was like 3,000 square feet. I had them painted all up. They designed how they wanted the pool table. And the pool company gave us like the, the biggest and best two pool that you can buy. A nine footers, that's the best you can get. And, and they had to build them right on the spot. Brand new, brand new. Wow, two of them. And they, and they came in, they said, kids, we want that, we want that. And I said, okay. And they built them and everything they picked out. And we kept that place. It was just last year when I closed that place down because the mall closed. 2010. Kids from Rutland High School. That's how we got there. And then somebody from Castle and College, I ain't going to say these names, board members from Castle came to the Rutland Mall and they said, wow, we really love this. We got a grant from Castle and College. Can you help us? And we have a space. Can you help us, um, you know, or, you know, put it all together, you know? And I said to them, first, first, I need a youth advisory book. And I don't do nothing without talking to people who I work for. They got to tell me. I'm not going to. I probably have a good idea. I probably can give them the right answers. But if they don't get, if I don't hear from my youth advisory board, I ain't feeling it. I'm not, I'm not going there. So I created a youth advisory board from Rutland High Schools and um, and from. Um, Mill Rivers and um, Fairhaven High School. And um, because they wanted to do this in Fairhaven, 
And so I got put my little youth board together, you know, high school. They knew, they, we, we traveled to Rutgers so I can see how this one was laid out. You know, these kids was like so excited. And it was right around the, um, Fairhaven, that park, around, it's beautiful, you know, right around the park, it's right on the thing. And so they had a little, first, their first original space was on the city they gave them. And it was in like in this old, it was like where a city hall is and the police and everybody was in there. But on the last floor up there, they had an open space. It was so unique because it was so cool because it was old um, build, building. And it was, old, it was used for, you know, kids back in the 50s or whatever. And so it had a basketball court upstairs, which was really on your time of basketball upstairs. But it was, you know, and so, so it was, they, it, they called it the loft. And so when we was getting the names, um, so in this new building we got to, it was 89 Main Street. So the kids named it Loft 89. So that's how we got to Loft 89, and it's, and it's at the bottom it says a, a program or chill out center or whatever. And um, so the same type of model, same thing, and we kept that forever, you know. And um, and so that's how we got to centers, and it just evolved because my youth board president, Charlene Fu, said we need to change something up a little bit. You know what I mean, let's let's change, knock out the because uh, he helped me to create the U University Mall Chill Out Center. The because um, there was living room called the living rooms for the end and everything like that. But um, she helped me create those, and um, so she wanted to evolve them because she now she's a sophomore in, in Middlebury, so she wanted to evolve from five, so which was fine. And um, so we changed them to art galleries, you know, art so one of art galleries where we help people with art, you know, because um, you know starving artists. She's an artist herself, so, Arlene, and a lot of our team is artists. Um, and um, and the graffiti art and all that stuff. So and we did art shows every year at the Marriott. We do them every year, and that's, it's going to come up our ninth year. And um, so I thought it was a great idea. And then we still and then one in the Burlington Mall is like about a thousand square feet. So it was just this art gallery. And in that gallery, now that we're back open, you know, we're gonna get back to rolling because it's shut down on us and you know, like everybody on it. I think it's a bad time, but it seemed like it, it was a bad time. Um, and so so she. Um, so we got that one open, and um, and uh, so all we're gonna do is showcase art. But the one in that 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 space, that space is um, um, you know, artists can showcase their art in that space that our uh, art director Ali um, picks out, and they they pay absolutely nothing. They get a hundred percent of the proceeds. How good is that? One hundred percent of the proceeds, man. It's full of art right now. Ali's got it online, so if you want to buy art, go Art So Wonderful and check out some of the art in Bronzemont. So our uh, space in the university mall, we had it for like five months, but it also was um, it was also cut out, you know, because um, of the virus. And we had so we just starting to get art in there. In our mural, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so so now it's art going in there. I think uh, Ali's gonna have it all done by Sunday. All the artists are bringing art in, and it's like it's like uh, five thousand square feet. So we're gonna have a performing center in there. Oh, it's gonna be so awesome. Through stage and everything. And in the back of it, which is nothing like about mm, almost thousands square feet, we'll have a recording studio and where kids can come and do arts and craft for free. Even a recording studio. Now, only thing we're gonna charge for the um, um, for people to sell, when they set our art that, that place in is that it's twenty percent. You we did our due diligence. It's a it's so I can't believe it. Art galleries, I don't know, I don't know. It's my first time opening, so I, I, maybe I'll learn why they do it. But charge 40, it's our 50 to 60% of the person's artist payment, out their payment to pay their art in there. 50 to 60%? Oh, good Lord. I was wondering why they raised their price up by a thousand bucks or, you know, or, you know, I don't know if they, a lot of them told me that's the reason why they raised up because of the fees. So it don't seem like there ain't really no fee, you know. But for us, 20%, we want to make it right for um, you know, people, you know what I mean? And um, we have all different type of artists that's part of it. You know, we have like fancy, you know, really artists who've been doing things. Right now it's art in there, you know what I mean, in the university mall. Artists who've been doing things for years and got art in galleries around the world, you know what I mean, and there and there. We have some um, neighboring, you know, some cool like um, new artists, you know. So it's collective of all, and then we're gonna have um, artists from um, part of our part of our um, United College Club and Arts a Wonderful organization that work real close with her is U University of Vermont Art Club. So they 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 help do this one, and, and it's another one they're doing in the University Mall. We're gonna um, talk to you one about pearls we're gonna do. But, um, and so, so that's what we do at our art gallery. It's gonna be performing. So we got a comedy show, a free comedy show, right? With our, our um, Max Palmer. Oh, look up Max Palmer, he's so funny. He works with us. We do, we do comedy shows, we raise money. 
is on our team in the, uni in the University Mall. It's going to be July 18th at like I think it's 5 p.m. right in the center court. And we're going to have like, you know, all the PVA, you know, social distancing, you know, but it's going to be just an event where people can actually feel good about, um, you know, get their mind off of something, you know what I mean? And just have a great time, you know, and just laugh and talk, you know, and just have a, a moment, you know, you know, we, a moment. So I'm looking forward to that. It's July 18th, I think at 5 p.m. If it ain't 5 p.m., I'll make it 5 p.m. now, that's what I'm saying. 5 p.m. in Center Court, um, where, you know, where I, it's right across from our art gallery. Um, yeah, on, um, yeah. So it's going to be, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I, I want to laugh too. Max is so funny. That's just, but, um, so, so, like I said, we do a lot of things and it keeps my head is going everywhere. So I'm not, I, I'm not on point right here. It's but, a lot of energy. Yeah, it's a lot of it's energy. A lot of energy. Yeah. And, um, Hopefully some support. Yeah, so definitely. So folks want to know more, they go to... They can look up Service Rendered Incorporated or they can just look up uh, at Arts So Wonderful. At Arts, A-R-T-S, So Wonderful. At oh. Arts So Wonderful. And they'll see a lot of things too. they see a lot of murals, the current murals. They'll see, um, you know, they'll see this mural right here. See our artist, they'll see my art director, Ali, and, um, you know, and all our team, you know, in there and they can contact any of them, you know. And um, we're very proud to, to work with UVM Arts Club, um, Patrick Mann, and he's the president, and he writes right with us. You know, he's like he's on everything. I say, Patrick, man, I say, Patrick, if you want to work, you want if you want your club to do some art, do some murals, you better get on board with us. And then he's like, okay, okay, he's so excited. And then he didn't know. I mean, you know, people, most people don't know when I say something like that. I, I really mean it. I mean, and that, you know, and that, and all comes start. We start right like the next day. It's not like you know you're gonna start. In three weeks, you know, no, tomorrow, buddy, you know what I mean? And so that, he basically, he kind of started like that, you know what I mean? With this mural, you know what I mean? The next thing, you know, he got, he's doing the University Mall mural. Now he got it one on Pearl Street to do. He got stuff on two other locations in the mall. So, so he's like, oh my God, you said that. And he was on the press, he was on the news. He got, so he talked about um, um, UVM Art Club. And so how wonderful is that? How, how, what's the measurement on that right then, really? I, it's to, the measurement on what we do, and probably and a lot of people do. It's too great to measure. I cannot put a, a measurement on that. Now look what he got for his resume, his uh, his portfolio, his uh, press kit. Just these things, this press stuff. Then just now, this he's got just right now. Just work with us. So and that's everybody get that from us. Everybody. We make sure of it. That's why we got over 50 awards. You're we make a community connector. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's funny. Um, one, one mayor at City Hall mayor told me I was the hub. I was like, Bruce, you're the hub. I'm like, I'm looking at him, you're the, you're the mayor. You're telling me I'm the hub. You know, I'm like, I don't know. But all I do is try to make things work. And what I do is like, because we need help, you know, people want to want to help us go to Service Rendered Incorporated. Art So Wonderful. We got a go. We got a, we have a Art So Wonderful GoFundMe page right now because we need um, recording equipment to, for we need to provide free recording for free. You know, we'll pay our engineers, we'll pay our engineers, but free. But anyway, so when the mayor told me that I was a hub, you know, I was a connector, I mean, like, like you just said. You know. And what I, what I was saying was that I'm like that because we need help. I just, the things, the mall spaces, this thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars that, that things that we do, I do know that, that most people don't, they can't do it because they don't, they don't, they could do it, but they don't think how we, how like we do it because we have community partners and how our community partners, we don't say thank you, see you later. We say, how can we help you too with our other partners? And I do that. And I'm a, I'm, I do that. You know, I bring people to Rotarian meetings. I bring people to connect with other people who do kind of like they need their service and, and they, they with the, the deals they make. It's way, way bigger than what they, you know, give to us. But, but, but because what they do for us, I can't put a measurement. So I, I don't. So it's like it's a balance. So we help others. That's why we continue to have our sponsors since the day we started. They still support us. I don't have to put in no a hundred-page proposal. I don't, you know, I don't have to do it. I say this is what we're doing. They understand what we do, and um, mail send a check. I text them or email them or whatever. You know, say this is what we're gonna do. Blah, blah, blah. And they say and they get it. You know, and and I had to. I had the nerves to ask them why one year why one of our sponsors you know why they do that, and um, and he told me 
you know, he's just multi-millionaire, got all these, this, that going for himself. And he, he ain't got to do this stuff for me. Every time I ask him when I put together something like a 10-page proposal, and he, I just text him or email him, and he said, good. He said, well, Bruce, I, I, I go, I'm a, people, everybody asks me for money. You know what I mean? Da, da, da. And that, um, and I, um, and they send me, I, I get the newsletter, I get their measurement reports, and they tell me that, you know, you know, well, if we had, in theory, if, if we had, Thank you for the cereal that you provided for these kids. I'm just, this is a hypothetical, and uh, and, it, and, it, and it was great in the milk. But if they had bananas in them, we can get we can get more kids to come. And, and so, can you give us more money, you know? And so he says that's a part of giving. He say, my, he say, what I do, I like to you know see it myself. You know what I mean? And I could I should believe them about their marriage, but it's, I can't wrap myself around it too much. He said, but when I go to your places. When you say it's going to be 300 kids there, it's 300 kids there. He said, I can see the, I can see your mission. I can see the kids. I can see that they're in a safe place where there's no drugs and alcohol, tobacco. I can see them interacting. I see them having fun. I see chaperones or security there, whatever it is. I see that. You don't, you don't have to, um, I get it. So I don't have to go to you. I, if you, I don't have to go. And I see you on the news. I see you on your cable shows. I see, you know, I don't, I don't have to go there. I don't have to worry about if my money being spent for real, I see it. And more than one of those type of persons told me that. And that's why we have our sponsors for, like I say, since 1999, they still there. They ain't going nowhere. That's how we're able to do the things we do. And then we help them too, based on what they do with our other sponsors who's just like them. You know, hey, you need some recycling? For all your millions of square feet of property? Yeah, oh, well, let me get you, introduce you to this person. They meet. Boom! Now, these, now, how big is that? How big is that? He these guys, he these guys, multi, multi guys, millionaire guys. You know what I mean? And and I'm able to help them. A little guy like me, which I think I'm no, I don't think nobody's better than nobody. Make a deal because it makes me feel good. Because now, they help us. We help them. It's a, a, a sponsorship is a partnership. And I and we the part we have to do our part too. I don't like thank you. Here's your thank you letter. You know, I say, hey, I sent him a text. Thanks, man. That was good. You know, we, I send you. I let you know how many people came and blah blah blah. You know, like, I might come through. Oh yeah, definitely come through. You know, you know, something I like, like that. that. Sponsorship is a partnership. That's right. And I, I believe by that all the time. That's why. That's why. And that's why. Let me tell you something. This art so wonderful logo was created by um, our person who created our program, United College School. I was telling all the schools we work with. The United College is uh, working with all the different colleges and students. And um, Marion Gromaski. <laughs> 1999 she created that uh, United College Club and she said Bruce she was going to Champlain College she said Bruce um, Champlain College students St. Michael's students and UVM students so they seem they don't get along they said especially St. Michael's and, and um, UVM he said it's like Champlain students she said we're like the mediators between the both and I don't know why see, and she said we should uh, put together a, a college program that um, work with that, that we can work together and um, and she was telling me that if they, if they all work together they could build it Based on United, based on Champlain College, UVM, and St. Michael's, they have a credible resource. They 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 big it. They the biggest in the state for schools, maybe California, Norris, whatever. But um, as so I said, go right ahead. I said, give it a name. Mississippi goes into Texas. She wrote it down. She called it United College Club, and and it goes on today. You know, and Maren Gromaski, when I call her, talk about her, the measurement, the outcome. She still. All through college, she helped us with United College Club because you were there to do events and all kind of cool things and on campus, off campus. And, you know, we do Ben and Jerry every year, like the Vermont contest. And the Greeks would come in, you know what I mean, eat up ice cream for us and win every year. We had the, we had the, uh, we had the Vermont contest title because the, the Greeks, we had the party of the would come in and do that event that you, um, Ben and Jerry's here. But anyways, so Miriam, I, she still helped when she graduated. She lives in Colorado now. Beautiful kids and family. She still do what, the work she do. You know, graduate from Champlain and the graphics. And she created our, our so wonderful logo. Kind of look like that one. Our logo. And we still, she, she helped us with our, our um, studio, I mean, our um, events, that, our art shows that uh, marry out every year. She's still a part of what we do. So. Gotta wrap up. Yeah. So I'm um, saying. So, anyways, the, so the meal we're doing in. Um, in um, People should come by and see it. Come, it's a mural we're doing at University Mall right now. It's going on actually right now, and it's 80 foot long. It's about communities, about everything that Vermont has to offer. And if you're in that mall and you look and you're right by um, Bowdy and Baffin, 
on Victoria's Secret on the side coming. You see a big one said Vermont. That's ours too. Now on um, soon, I think next week or so, we're gonna start our new mural. We have to, we have a uh, Pearl Street Beverage on Union Street. So those murals are ours. Two of those and one around the back. And on the parking side, we're gonna change that Del Rey's cars chasing the bus, or whatever. And it's gonna be, um, it's like a hundred feet long. It's gonna be a dedication to our frontline workers. Our artist, Jamie Bernard, is, is um, she, she showed me the design. So nice, we're gonna have like, you know, the nerves, the fire, you know, the, you know all the frontline workers, essential workers on that wall with some type of dedication to them. It's gonna be so nice. And, I, and I'm so happy to be a part of it. I'm gonna help out with that probably this private wall again. <laughs> but we, go, we have UVM Art Club's gonna be there. Uh, Ali, our, 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 our director, all our, our teams will be there to help out on that one. We'll, uh, we'll get com any community person want to put a brush on, we'll let them do it. Okay. So. Thanks so much, Bruce, yep. for talking. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. What you doing? Yeah, thanks. Thank you guys for like covering me up for since around 2001 or 2003. We've been doing shows at CCTV. God, without you guys, we wouldn't know what to do. Um, CCTV 17, we wouldn't know what to do, you know, I just couldn't get the word out, you know, and we couldn't, get, and just let you know, we bring guests in to tell their stories too. We don't just say, um, thank you, and say, come on, other people need to hear what you do too, you know. And so we weren't able to do that without um, CCTV 17, we just weren't able to do it, so thank you very much.